Did Wonka show you just a single word of pure imagination? Or is there more to come for the young chocolatier and his tiny orange friend? Here's what the ending of Wonka really means. Willy Wonka is an immigrant fresh off the boat in a new land with big dreams of making and selling chocolate. Inspired by his mother, but he has no money to his name. Desperate for a place to stay, he takes a suspiciously cheap room deal from Mrs. Scrubbit and Bleacher. Unable to read the fine print, forcing him into decades of indentured servitude. Wonka's plans to pay off his debts by selling chocolate also face a roadblock of the chocolate cartel led by Slugworth, who are in cahoots with the chief of police to shut down all competition. Wonka teams up with Scrubbit's other hapless victims to surreptitiously build their chocolate empire, though they occasionally have to resupply ingredients stolen by an Oompa Loompa seeking payback for a previous cocoa theft. Wonka's most significant friend in this group is Noodle an orphaned girl who teaches him how to read. Wonka's magical confections prove so popular with the public that he's eventually able to open his own store. The opening, however, is sabotaged by the cartel, who pay off Scrubbit and Bleacher to poison the store's supply. At his lowest point, Wonka is given an ultimatum. If he leaves town, all of his friends' debts will be paid off. On the boat out of town, the Oompa Loompa catches up with Wonka, encouraging him to fight back against the cartel. Wonka realizes that Slugworth's signet ring matches Noodles. It turns out she's Slugworth's niece, and she wasn't freed but instead bought by Scrubbit and Bleacher to keep her out of her family's fortune. Wonka returns to reunite with his friends for a massive heist to acquire the documented evidence of the cartel's crimes. They find the documents, but the cartel traps Wonka and Noodle in a flooding chocolate chamber. The Oompa Loompa, still on the trail of Wonka's chocolate, ends up rescuing them before they drown. The police turn on their corrupt chief after seeing the evidence. The cartel leaders are blown away after eating Wonka's levitation candies, and the chocolate explodes into a fountain. Wonka opens a bar of chocolate he's been saving from his mother, and inside is a golden ticket with a message about the joy of sharing chocolate with people. Noodle's mom is found, allowing for a mother-daughter reunion as Wonka sings pure imagination, and Wonka and the Oompa Loompa make a deal to work together to build their chocolate factory. Wonka spells out its ultimate moral loud and clear, literally writing it on a golden ticket. It's the old cliché of the real treasure was the friends we made along the way, delivered with just enough conviction and earnestness to hopefully make viewers' eyes water more than they roll. Wonka's motivation from the beginning is driven by his love for his mother, and though she's no longer with him except in memory, he's now built up a group of friends and has a found family he seeks to take care of. The movie also makes clear that you can balance caring for others with pursuing your personal dreams. Wonka was ready to give give up the latter for the sake of the former, but he realizes he can do both. What are you doing? I'm making chocolate, of course. This message is perhaps the one thing the movie has in common with the 2005 Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Whereas the book and the 1971 movie use Wonka primarily as an arbiter of sin and virtue for the kids visiting the factory to learn lessons from, the 2005 movie shifts the arc more towards Wonka himself learning the value of family. The difference is that Johnny Depp's version of Wonka learned that lesson at an older age after having a much more fraught relationship with his own family. While the ending of Wonka works successfully as a conclusion to the movie's self-contained narrative, it's weird as an origin story for this particular character. Whether you're talking about the book or the two previous movie adaptations, Willy Wonka is a character famous for his mysteriousness and reclusiveness. The Gene Wilder version in particular has a sharp, cynical edge. He doesn't even feign caring about kids getting injured on his factory tour. And even Charlie nearly gets screwed out of his reward due to the fine print on a contract he couldn't possibly read. If Wonka is all about a younger Wonka learning the value of friendship, isn't it weird to think he'd later go on to shut himself up in his factory and shun the outside world? Perhaps the Oompa Loompas would be friends enough for him in his recluse years. But surely he'd want to stay in some contact with Noodle and his other human friends as well, right? Furthermore, it's sad to imagine this version of Wonka, screwed over by contract law in his youth, growing up to be the same man who would try to do the same to other people. The suspense is terrible. He, he's gonna go this time. I hope it'll last. He, it's not really clear whether this is a standalone story about Willy Wonka or intended to eventually segue into the events of the novel and films. Paul King's film does offer some points of distinction that might imply this is a different continuity. Where the book explicitly takes place in England and the 1971 movie in the United States, Wonka seems to take place in a fantasy setting. The monetary currency of silver sovereigns is fictional. Magic holds a greater presence in this world than it did in other Wonka stories. 
especially in the musical numbers. The period is also distinctly indistinct, with an anachronistic mishmash of styles and technologies. And this film's version of Arthur Slugworth is definitely a different take from the 1971 version. In his performance, Timothy Chalamet isn't attempting an impression of Gene Wilder. If anything, his exaggerated comic deliveries and good-natured yet foolish characterization feel like they take more inspiration from Jim Carrey's performances. If Chalamet Wonka is supposed to in fact be a younger version of the Wilder Wonka, then presumably a lot is going to change in his life between Wonka and whenever he gives Charlie Bucket a factory tour. If the Chalamet Wonka is to eventually become the Wilder Wonka, it will be at least in part thanks to the influence of the Hugh Grant Oompa Loompa. Though he only appears for brief portions of the film, the Oompa Loompas turn out to be one of its most important characters in terms of moving the story along. His characterization is in many ways closer to the Wonka audiences already know and love, both in his wittiness and in his extreme pursuit of justice that borders on sadism. By Loompa law, any crime must be met with 1,000 times the punishment. This sort of philosophy that might justify turning annoying gum-chewing kids into blueberries or shrinking television and teleporting them into a TV. It's the Oompa Loompa who encourages Wonka to fight back against the chocolate cartel, setting the story's climax in motion. While this fighting back doesn't escalate into the nightmare fuel of Book Wonka or Wilder Wonka's ironic punishments, it does at least push the character a bit closer to classic Roald Dahl-style darkness rather than keeping him purely a figure of innocent whimsy. Combine the Oompa Loompa's influence with Noodle starting to give Wonka a more proper education on non-chocolate subjects, and you can at least imagine the roots of how this version of Wonka is starting to become closer to the original in some ways, even if the power of friendship stuff makes him more different in others. In an interview with GamesRadar, coinciding with the release of the film's trailer in July, Paul King gave insight into how he went about approaching his conception of a younger Wonka. Doing so was a challenge, he said, before continuing to say, but I also felt, maybe misguidedly, but just probably from those childhood readings, that I did know who this person was. How do you like it? Dark, white, nutty, absolutely insane. He pointed to the end of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory as proof of how even the aged, cynical version of the character still believed in goodness, kindness, and hope, which was key to developing his younger version. Noodle, he explained, was necessary as a slightly more cynical person to counterbalance young Wonka's innocence. Even so, King acknowledged, I'm not sure my soul is quite as dark as Roald Dahl's. That sentiment goes some way to explaining why the film ends on such a happy note with Wonka's positivity generally intact. Hugh Grant's job, both in performing in and promoting Paul King's films, has been to bring his trademark cantankerousness to a role that could otherwise risk becoming sickly sweet. Speaking to the Associated Press alongside Timothy Chalamet, Grant took shots at the director's perfectionism and the strangeness of playing an Oompa Loompa. While still making it clear he loved being part of the production, talking about the film's moral, he said, It's not a trite, tacked-on motto. It comes from his heart. Chalamet seconded this assessment that the director really means it, while acknowledging he'd be suspicious if he heard about it from the outside. Charlemagne compared the experience to his work on Greta Gerwig's Little Women, in terms of being an adaptation of a classic story that's done well enough to overcome skepticism about IP-based movies. This movie was like a breath of fresh air with a story that's outside the bounds of Roald Dahl's original material. I thought it was magical. In a Total Film article, King revealed he was open to making sequels to Wonka. He pointed out how Roald Dahl, a writer who didn't really write sequels, nonetheless kept exploring different things he could do with the character of Willy Wonka. He wrote Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, featuring Wonka, and even had plans to write a third book in the series. So there's plenty of potential for continuation. King said, There's an awful lot more Wonka story that we have that we would like to tell. It's not like Dune Part 1, where you go, this is what's happening in Part 2. Hopefully it works exquisitely as a standalone movie. But I would definitely like to do more, and I'd like to spend more time in this world and meet some more Oompa Loompas. 